While some of the rappers from the legendary 2016 Double XL freshman class have remained at the top, others have experienced major falloffs, drifted into mental breakdowns, even found themselves at the center of a major fraud operation. However, you can argue that no one's career has flourished quite like 21 Savage, and he's even on record saying this himself. That fresh recovery, you know, mm. nobody. So you could beat Lil Uzi? Hell yeah. While his freestyle on the cypher was somewhat laughable, you an old nigga, man, you washed up. Young Savage, man, I got my car washed up. It's astonishing he even made it here in the first place. Raised in Atlanta's notorious Zone 6, 21 Savage knew that if he had any shot at living a prosperous life, he had to find his way out of the hood. But the odds were stacked against him. There ain't really like too many ways to make it out besides rap and basketball. And where I'm from, ain't too many people made it out. Only other artists that's made it out is like B.O.B. Initially seen as one of the poster boys for the mumble rap movement, 21 has long since shed the skin of people who thought that he was just another mindless MC who would gradually fade into a relevancy. I'ma keep doing what I do so they can keep talking shit and saying I'm a mumble rapper but you can hear every word I got now say. Following his debut solo album Issa, 21 started to really commit to his craft, and by the time he dropped 2018's I Am Greater Than I Was, he was getting a lot of respect for his hard-hitting lyrics and willingness to go deeper. Then, just as it was all going well, he had his career briefly derailed by an attempt from ICE to deport the rapper, who up until that point, no one even knew he was British. Luckily, hip hop had his back, even when the memes were everywhere, and it was none other than Jay Z who helped him regain his freedom. And I called me while I was in jail. Told me, like, bro, I just got locked up. And he called Jay Z. Mm. And Jay Z put a lawyer on my case. He played a role in getting me out of there. Since coming back to the game, 21 has kept going from strength to strength. From Savage Mode 2 with Metro Boomin to her loss with Drake. 21 was killing every collaborative project as well as each feature he got on. He was so prominent in that time that he managed to be the fifth most streamed artist in 2023 without even dropping a solo project. With so much success coming his way, he had every reason to be feeling himself and infamously claimed that he was at the top of his XXL freshman class. In 2024, he kept his run strong with the eventual release of his third album American Dream, his fourth album to hit number one, selling 133,000 units and outselling I Am Greater Than I Was. And by spending three weeks at number one, it actually outperformed his friend Drake's For All The Dogs album, which only held that position for two. Although stats like that would make it hard to argue that he's excelling beyond what everyone else is doing, one man who refused to accept that is Kodak Black. Back in the days of the freestyle, Pompano Beach's Kodak was probably one of the hottest rappers in the lineup, bursting onto the scene with his hit songs No Flock and A Skirt Skirt. <laughs> His opening freestyle line made him a legend on the internet. A rough and rugged MC who really lived that life that he was rapping about, Kodak's debut album Painting Pictures is seen as a classic amongst his fans. Over the years, he's dropped plenty of projects to varying degrees of acclaim and commercial sales, but the main problem is that his constant stints in and out of jail just constantly got in the way. From drug charges and firearm cases to sexual assault allegations, Kodak has been in and out of the prison system so much that people are begging him to get his shit together. Listen, Kodak Black, please don't make me have to give you donkey in the day again, man. You're getting another chance, another chance to get your life together and get your career on track. Please make the most of it, sir. As a result, his momentum has been stifled several times to the point that Yak's last album, When I Was Dead, majorly underperformed with just 13,000 units. As for major cultural hits, he hasn't had much in the way of a smash since Super Gremlin, which was admittedly huge thanks to TikTok. But since then, everything he's done has basically came and went. I wouldn't necessarily call him trash, it's just replay value for me. Very small. Even collaborating with Kendrick Lamar on Silent Hill from Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers wasn't really enough. Despite everything that pointed to 21 flourishing more than him in this era, Kodak still acted like Savage, saying he was the best in the class was the most absurd thing he had ever heard. I, I admire your confidence, though. And sh that's how you should feel it. You know, I'm always put myself first over, and over, over, over any nigga, any day. Two. Although he had words for 21, he has always been quick to say that his class is one of the most accomplished in the XXL freshman history. My freshman class 
probably doing better than any other class. I don't know why I ain't keeping up with. At the moment, what Kodak really seems to be struggling with is substance abuse issues, which was extremely clear in his recent appearance on Drink Champs, where he was incoherent for most of it. Kodak Black looked like sh on Drink Champs. The internet tried to overcomplicate sometimes. Kodak Black looked like pure sh on Drink Champs. He's also been caught falling asleep on IG Live, leaving fans concerned about him. At the minute, Kodak looks like he's in the midst of a real battle, but still has enough love from the hip-hop community that he could come back to the top. But it's possible to say that isn't the case for everyone else in his freshman class. As in the case of Dave East, it looks like he might have fallen a little too far out of the mainstream to ever come back. In the year 2016, Dave East was hyped to be the next big artist. A very talented New York MC who looked intent on bringing the East Coast back, Dave East's career got off to a flying start when he was signed to the legendary rapper Nas's Mass Appeal records. And the time the double XL freshman cover dropped, Dave was blowing up in the streets. Sour got me zoning, really thinking what got Malcolm shot. Basquiat when it come to art. You lying still looking for the whiz when it come to heart. I won't buy it. He continued his streaks of mixtapes like Kyrie Chanel and Paranoia, as well as his debut album Survival in 2019, where he landed just outside the top 10. But as soon as he reached that point, he started slipping a little. First off, he prematurely made himself seem like an old head and got himself clowned over his criticism for Lil Nas X's breakout single, Old Town Road. Fucking old Town Road is fucking whack. I don't know what the fuck is going on with hip hop, with rap, but I ain't no hater, man. This shit is whack with a cape on it. It's super whack. Immediately, people didn't think he was in a position of authority to make that call, saying that East doesn't even have a song better than Lil Nas X, and pointing out how he has zero hit records. Later down the line, Dave would admit that this had a negative effect on his career at large, and alienated some of his fans. I, I said I did not like Old Town Road. One day, I felt the way I said, I don't like this record. You know the entire community? <laughs> the community? Down on me. My From mother the Graham just slowed up. That happened years. Whenever that record came out, it been going on. So it's like you can't have an opinion on no more. By the sounds of it, Dave wants to blame his own failings on pretty much anyone but himself. As for his rap career, Dave hasn't charted since Karma 3, and his recent project, Fortune Favors the Bold, even had his hardcore fans wondering why he's still aiming for commercial tracks when it's just not working. Now appearing as Method Man in Wu-Tang and American Saga, among other things, there's a case to be made that he has more potential as an actor. In fact, he's even appeared in the show of one of his fellow freshmen who had moved out of hip-hop and into the world of entertainment, Lil Dicky. Hailing from suburban in Pennsylvania, Lil Dicky was a hard sell for a lot of people as a rapper, particularly with his comedic style. However, he sees his time in the double XL freshman class as pivotal in being taken seriously as an MC. After having a major smash hit with Freaky Friday featuring Chris Brown, Lil Dicky largely stepped away from rap to focus on the creation of his FX show, Dave. A series that is loosely based on his own life in the rap game, it became a major hit and is arguably what he is best known for now. And even though it seemed like he had never been taken seriously, he has achieved more than people probably thought he could. I hadn't put anything out and people thought I was crazy for even like be trying to become a rapper and then the first day I put it out it really went super viral day one and like I feel like every kind of unfortunately for me every time I've like had the moment where it's like the morning of like releasing this big thing that I've worked whether it's like my first music Freaky Friday or the show it just took off right away in a way that like is a huge relief to your soul when you're like, what's gonna happen? But while the TV show is highly regarded, it's fair to say that in music circles, he isn't exactly beloved. And when he finally returned to music with Penrith, which features tracks from the Dave show in 2024, people wondered why he didn't keep it, claiming that the album was absolutely horrible. Given the feared not good rating by Fantano, it looks like there isn't much demand for whatever Dave Bird has coming next in terms of projects. But the same definitely can't be said for Denzel Curry. Denzel was the first person to go in on what's now considered the most legendary double XL freshman cipher with rappers like 21, Uzi, Yachty, and Kodak. Seen as the odd man out in that iconic cipher, Denzel was a lyrically dense spitter in a sea of mumble rappers. Couple of pictures that's ready to shoot shit. Ducking and booking and dodging and dropping with 48 ounces and cigarette butts. Fucking around with the up and shalun, they will tell you the cues and I hope you be gone. Rhyming since he was 16 years old, Denzel had to suffer through a few failed attempts at becoming a freshman before he finally made it. When I found out, like, I was chosen for it, and I was just like, oh, shit. Because I remember two years prior, I was trying to get on a double XL, and the first two years was like, <laughs> and like, last year, I almost thought I had it because I had Ultimate. Ultimate just came out at that time, and then we did the video for it, and we did a pitch, and we almost had it, and we didn't have it. 
and this year I just got it. A Florida MC who has thrived for years now, the biggest issue Denzel has faced across his entire discography is that he's constantly being labeled underrated. So while other members of his class became superstars, he stayed at just a few rungs above the underground. Eventually, this started to get to him, and he would go on rants on Twitter stating how the only rapper better than him was Kendrick Lamar, which received heavy backlash from his audience. Ironically, it was an encounter with Kendrick's enemy, Drake, that compelled him to keep going. Since then, Denzel has consistently released one critically acclaimed body of work after another, with 2022's Melt My Eyes, See Your Future being his most successful record to date. Still, Denzel has been his frustrations about not getting the level of fame that he feels he deserves, earning a mixed response from his fan base, who feel that the shadow of the XXL freshman class is still hovering over him. While Zell craves a higher level of publicity, one of his fellow freshmen seems to actively want to run away from it, and that's Lil Uzi Vert. Since before he even graced the cover of the XXL freshman class issue, this Philadelphia MC had one of the strongest followings of any young artist. Equal parts rapper and self-proclaimed rock star, he was already killing the game by the time he dropped Lil Uzi Vert vs. The World in 2016, and after he featured on Migos' Bad and Bougie, he officially reached megastar status. From EXO tour life to collaborating with Cardi on Woke Up Like This, there was a period where it felt like everything Uzi touched turned to gold. But for a while, he went on a self-imposed high Hiatus, fueled by his issues with his DJ drama and Don Cannon led label Generation Now. First teased in March of 2018, his project Eternal A Take finally dropped in 2020 and got a massive response from fans. But ever since that project came out, it feels like Uzi hasn't been entirely satisfied with his own projects. All of my music for Eternal A Take got leaked, so I had to redo it. It didn't reach its full potential, I just knew it wasn't the sound I was going for. Let's just say Eternal A Take for another artist would have been really good good because it was super dumbed down to where everyone could enjoy it, but that's not my artistry. In another interview with Fat Joe, he continued to discuss what he felt were the shortcomings of the project, and how the pressures of his fan base actually made it nearly impossible to live up to what they expected. Just the, the, the press of time and everything, and come on Uzi, you need to drop, and I didn't want it to go on to three years, so I dropped this album, and the music is, is tolerable, it's not, oh my god, this is shit. The music is definitely there. It's good, good production, but honestly, from Little Uzi Vert, we expect it from Star, Moon, Spaceships, and the High Above. We expect everything from him because I'm already giving off this persona. I have a pink diamond in the middle of my head, yo. Everything is supposed to be going fucking down. When the pink tape dropped after another major layoff, Uzi said similar things, and now it looks like he might be done with hip hop entirely after his next project. Love is Race 3 will be my last album. <laughs> After Love is Race 3, I guess I will go on another tour for Love is Race 3. But after that, I want to try to live a normal life. At just 29 years old, it looks like Uzi might be ready to bow out on his own terms. While for G Herbo, it looks like he'll have no choice but to keep rapping to pay off all of the debt he found himself in. After making his name in Chicago, this drill pioneer had a huge underground buzz when he appeared on the cover and was well aware of the fact that the XXL cosign could be a gift and a curse. It's like, all right, you got the world on you looking at you now, what you gonna do with it? So it can be pressure if you use it to just go to the next level. A lot of people will look at you like, he ain't do shit else after that. He was on the cover and they put him on double XL cover and he blew up after that. Both before and after the cover, Herbo stayed steadily on his grind, dropping his debut album Humble Beast in 2017, before projects like PTSD and 25 just kept getting increasingly high exposure in chart positions. Along the way, he featured on tracks for everyone, from the late great Juice World and Young Dolph, to Gunna, Roddy Rich, Polo G, and many more. But even even while he was making it in the rap game, there were allegations that he was running a major fraud ring. In 2021, G Herbo, alongside his manager and other hip hop figures like producer Southside, were accused of being responsible for nearly $140,000 in victim losses that he used to fund his lavish lifestyle. Prosecutors accused him of using stolen identities to fund private jet trips, a vacation at a Jamaican villa, a personal chef, and the purchase of two designer puppies, and then lying about it all to federal agents. Herbert Wright, the third is also facing 
misdemeanor charges in Chicago. Two weeks ago, CPD officers found four guns and roughly $1,500 worth of marijuana in a car that he was riding. In 2023, he pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and one count of making a false statement to a federal official. As a result, he received three years of probation and a fine of $140,000. But unfortunately for G. Herbo, this wasn't the only reason his finances are in shambles, as he claims that he has been swindled by his own label machine, which is owned by his manager, Joseph J.B. Baldwin, someone who he once considered as a father figure, which he discussed at length during a 13-minute rant on a live stream. At the moment, G Herbo seems hell-bent on taking this as far as he can and is now countersuing his former manager, spending nearly a million dollars to leave the label. But while Herbo is struggling to keep his head above water, one of the other freshmen who's gone from strength to strength is Anderson Pack. When the initial ciphers came out, the multi-talented Anderson didn't put his best foot forward. His verse on the cipher has basically become a meme for how bad it was. I hopped off the stage and got right on the plane. I know it's a tip, but I'm bringing out Dre, I'm bringing out K, I'm bringing out Tip. I'm looking three stacks in the face, I'm with the free nationals, what more can I say? You not looking three stacks in the face rapping like this, my guy. Boy, I'm finna kill all y'all niggas, bro. And since then, even Pac himself has admitted that he fumbled it. That double XL freestyle was kinda ass, so I couldn't hit the leakers without spitting straight gas. Thankfully, Designer was also in the cypher, and he stole the show when it came to jokes. However, you can say that the cipher never really affected him. As after releasing Malibu in 2016, Anderson Pack has continually released phenomenal albums under the guidance of Dr. Dre and the Aftermath label. Since then, he's gone on to the highest heights of his career in terms of fame when he linked up with Bruno Mars to form Silk Sonic. Since then, he's gone on to win Grammys, serve as Eminem's drummer at the Super Bowl, and even collaborated with Korean pop icons BTS. Although he's not dropped an album in a little while, no one's having more fun than Anderson Pack at the minute. But if anyone could rival him in terms of enjoying their career, it's Lil Yachty. Since winning the 10th spot in the 2016 XXL freshman class, Lobo's career has been up and down. When his buzz was at its height, he was seen as everything wrong in modern hip hop by some old heads, specifically Joe Budden. I want you to be aware of your business. I want you to know whether you're in a 360 or not. I want you to appreciate the culture that changed your life and took you from college dorm room even older than noodles. I want you who's well spoken and articulates himself well. My nigga. <laughs> Since then, Lil Boat's journey has been up and down, with his records gradually getting more irrelevant up until he started to switch things up. At a certain point, what Yachty was doing just didn't resonate with his fans anymore. But then, a track by the name of Poland, which he never even intended to release, completely overturned his fortunes at a time when he wanted to pivot into another direction. I mean, that was irritating. I was pissed. <laughs> because I made Poland while making this album on a day when they were like mixing in the other room and I was just bored with the homies. I would have never dropped Poland, ever, because I was trying to pivot myself into this. I was really irritated when it dropped, but I'm so grateful it did. Like I said, I really don't know what I do next. I don't know if I'm gonna do this again or do more rap, I, I figured it out. After the viral success of Poland, Yachty embarked on the new direction he was imagining with his latest album, Let's Start Here, which delved into the world of psychedelic rock. At the same time, he's become one of Drake's closest collaborators and trusted advisors. So all in all, it's safe to say that Yachty is up right now. But the same cannot be said for Designer. And if you guys want to figure out what happened to him, I discussed it at length in the video on the screen.